Hi, so Steinberg will discontinue VST2 support in their host applications. Is this news? Well, we've known this since the beginning of this year, really. Let's have a look at what this really is all about and how it affects you and what the current state of affairs is. Let's go. So this is the announcement of Steinberg in January 2022. The discontinuation of VST2 marks the final step in the transition process to VST3. Focusing solely on VST3 will increase the stability of our products and allow us to fully leverage the advantages of the VST3 platform. As it stands, Steinberg hosts continue to offer VST2 compatibility and users of Mac computers with Apple Silicon can continue to use VST2 plugins under Rosetta 2. But within the next 24 months, Steinberg's host applications and plugins across macOS and Windows will offer VST3 compatibility only. Now, to ensure that you are prepared for these eventualities, we recommend to check if any third-party VST2 plugins are in use, and if so, to contact the corresponding plugin developers for details on supporting VST3. Now, the first part of this means in reality that the new versions of the Cubase host applications, somewhere within the next, well, one and a half years are left, they will only support VST3 plugins and no longer support VST2 plugins. So we're talking about host applications like Cubase, Nuendo, Dorico, and Wavelab, for example. Whether other manufacturers will also terminate their VST2 support, we don't know, but this is Steinberg's side of the story. Now, obviously, VST3 has been around for many, many years already. It was introduced in 2008, so by now that's 14 years ago. And a lot of plugin manufacturers, well, almost every plugin manufacturer is now providing their plugins in both VST2 format and VST3 format, or some of them are only providing plugins in VST3 format even. Now, the fact that newer plugin manufacturers do not provide VST2 plugins anymore is probably also caused by the fact that Steinberg no longer provides licenses for the VST2 SDK, which you need to develop software for the VST2 plugin format. And they've stopped doing this for years already, so everybody really knew that this was coming. Now, for all practical purposes, what have we noticed so far about this change? Well, one thing is that at the release of Cubase 12 on the Mac M1 platform, VST2 plugins were no longer supported natively. You can still run VST2 plugins on an M1 Mac under Rosetta, the emulation layer. But obviously, if you've bought one of those new Macs, you probably want to run as much as possible natively. And then VST2 plugins are no longer supported under Cubase 12. And I think the same is the case with the more recently released Nuendo 12. Now, another thing that we noticed is that a lot of plugin manufacturers, which did not support VST3 yet, are being nagged by their user base about adding VST3 support to their plugins. For example, Sound Toys was one of the late adapters. Currently on their site, if you look at, for example, the Decapitator plugin, and you scroll down, you see that the supported plugin format is VST2, and no VST3 is listed yet. Fortunately, however, they've also made an announcement in March this year about VST3 support. They are saying that they are currently finalizing the VST3 versions of our plugins and expect to have them available for public beta very soon. Another manufacturer which has been lagging a bit about adding VST3 support to their plugins is UAD. If I look at this project, for example, and I want to add the UAD plugin, you can see that Quadrifus version 2, which is not UAD, is VST3 by this little symbol here to the right of the plugin. But you see all other UAD plugins in the list do not have that symbol to the right of them. So none of them are VST3. And this is with the UAD version 10.1 that I just downloaded and installed from their website. But also for UAD plugins, there is light on the horizon because UAD also introduced UAD Spark plugins, which is a subscription-based model for their plugins. And they can run natively on your host. So without UAD hardware and for those plugins, they say on their website that you can use UAD Spark plugins in any macOS DAW, Windows coming fall 2022, that supports audio units, AAX, or VST3 plugin types. So for these plugins, and it's a limited set so far, but they will be extended with other UAD plugins, and they will all be able to run VST3 on the Mac. Now, they're not saying yet that they will port their entire collection to VST3 or that this will also run on the Windows. But since they're moving this way, fingers crossed that by, I don't know, maybe the end of this year, a lot of their plugins will be available in VST3 format. Now, another manufacturer which has been quite slow in adopting VST3 
is the manufacturer of a very popular synth called Serum, which is a wavetable synth. And if you scroll down there, you also see that as for plugin support, they're supporting VST 2.4, so not version 3. But also for that popular synth, they have announced in the forum that Serum VST 3 should be available in the next month or so. It's currently in testing. And there's a Discord link if you want to join that testing program. So as you can see, it is looking promising that a lot of the plugin manufacturers that did not support VST3 yet are changing their minds and porting their plugins to VST3. Now, have you noticed any other consequences of this change at Steinberg? Let me know if there's something major that I missed. And also remember, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the little bell icon if you want to know when I publish another video. And you can also check out my affiliate links in the description for even more support to the channel if you intend on buying something related to music. If you do that via any of those links, I get a small commission without any cost to you. Now, as for Steinberg abandoning VST2, I can certainly understand the change. It's by now a very old standard. It was never very well documented. And the VST3 standard is quite an improvement in all of this. It's also a major pain as a software manufacturer that you need to keep testing for those old technologies because that takes away the effort that you can spend on new things. You can also compare it to Apple moving to the M1 platform, for example. Suddenly all software and plugin manufacturers had to start supporting that platform. That's just the way it goes. New technology gets introduced and old technology is phased out. But let me know how you feel about this change and what the impact is for you. Now another big change in Steinberg software land is that they have now started using a licensing method for which you do not need the old Steinberg key anymore. I also have a video about that. Check it out over here. Enjoy and see you soon.